sniper here? Hi there, welcome to Intuition, whereby we take a look at behind the scenes of academia to find out what students really think. My name is Lila. And I'm Flint. And today we're asking, what does it mean to network? So when people think of networking, they have this image of, you know, a bunch of people standing around uncomfortably in suits, exchanging business cards and, you know, twirling their straws in their whiskey glasses. But, you know, to some of us, that image is quite frightening and it's kind of like something that brings us anxiety. And for me, throughout my university career, I've also been pretty intimidated by the by the idea of networking because I've always felt that, you know, it's like me entering a battlefield and I have like a specific target and I have to behave like according to this secret code that I don't know about. But ironically, after doing some networking myself and also after meeting people who I think are also well networked, I kind of realized that not everyone's idea of networking is the same as mine. In other words, they don't find it intimidating or they don't think it's scary and they also have a much more casual approach to it. So I really wonder why is that the case? Why, why do some people feel so anxious thinking about networking and for some people they get so enthusiastic about it? And so for this episode, this is a question that Flynn and I want to tease into and really want to find out, you know, what does it mean to network and how do some people go about it? And so we're fortunate enough to have Forrest Kong, who is a recent graduate in economics here at UBC and who is also currently an actual analyst at Morning Chappelle. Throughout his time at UBC, Forrest was the president of VSEUS, that is the Vancouver School of Economics Undergrad Society. And he was also a Chapman and Commons assistant here at the CLC, where he was also quite an Instagram star. And Due to all of those factors, Flynn and I think that Forrest is one of the most well-networked people on campus. So the first question we ask Forrest is, what is networking and how does he approach it? Does he see it as an opportunity to meet people who will give him a job in the future, or does he see it as more of a casual event to meet people? Okay, I'll say, I'll say this. I actually hate the word networking. Um, it's just The reason why is because I feel like when I think about networking, I, the first thing that comes to mind is artificial. I, just to give you kind of a background, for me, I'm a very extroverted kind of person. I love to be around a lot of people and have these conversations. And usually when it comes to these conversations, there really isn't a step one, step two, step three, right? Like, I don't really think that there should be like a rule of how you're supposed to talk to someone. It's just what you really feel from the inside. And this perception that I'm kind of getting when I hear the word networking is kind of the opposite where it's hey this is the instructions of A to Z of how do you communicate with someone in a professional environment and usually when you think about networking the way I think about it is that there's some sort of incentive or there's some sort of reason as to why you're communicating with someone and that's something that I'm not really too keen on when I say the word networking I like I like to think of it as more of um, commu communication building or uh, community building or the idea of building relationships right I don't really like to use the word networking it's, it turns it into too much of like a business kind of term Here's how, here's how I think about it in a student perspective. Us as students, the way I view it is that we try to get into university or college or some sort of post-secondary with the goal in mind of trying to advance your career, right? Whether you're going to go into more education or whether you decide to go find a job, the idea is that this paper that you're going to get when you graduate as a signal, really the big part of it is to find a job. And now, unfortunately, just because getting into university nowadays and just having a university degree is so much more common than what it was before. Mm -hmm. Now you're gonna have to find different ways or different transactions to make yourself stand out compared to what it was like 10, 20 years ago. And so what's the next way to do that? It's now networking, right? And people are saying, hey, you could go into university and get yourself a degree, but if you don't know people in the industry, you're not gonna get anywhere. And so what I'm starting to see now when you're going to these network, quote unquote networking events or these socials or whatever is that they're treating it as a transaction, right? They're not coming in thinking, hey, I just wanna meet people. I just wanna have some fun and build these connections. It's really more of, hey, I need to talk to this person because I wanna get a job. I need to talk to this person or else I'm not gonna get my foot in the door for this industry. And they're turning that into a checklist where you need to network in order to get to that next destination. Granted though, that's what I did before as well, right? Like I was also in the same situation where it was like, I'm not gonna get anywhere unless I know people as well. but. At the same time, though, it, it's very dangerous when you start thinking about it as a transaction, and that's kind of where the direction is heading towards, just based on how networking is being perceived. 
So what I gather from that is that Forrest really wants to sort of delineate between two different definitions of networking. The first one is sort of a cynical transactional view wherein he thinks that there is very little, if any, value to be had, specifically because it's so shallow. The second one is more of a social interaction wherein you build friends and you build your community up. And people just sort of help each other incidentally. It's not something that's really that transactional. And another one of the things that was sort of implied in that passage is that there was a point in time where Forrest did approach networking as if it were a cynical sort of transactional thing. And so we pressed him on that a little bit and we asked him at what point did he decide that it should be more about community building. As a second or third year student trying to get into the econ program and then um, trying to get into co-op and trying to find these different job opportunities and when you have the door kind of shut in your face it's, you start panicking and especially in an environment where you're always excelling and this is like kind of the first time where failure is in front of you right it's prominent and it's something that a lot of students may or may not have experienced before right and so for me I obviously went up to different career centers I talked to different people and they say hey you know what you need to talk to people t- just again to get your foot in the door, that's the transaction that needs to be done in order for you to be successful, right? And so for me, when when I was in my third year, I want, just a background, I wanted to become an actuary. And so when I thought about it, it was, okay, what I need to do is I need to, I got the education part, that's completely fine, right? Everything that I studied was aligned with what they're looking for. Now I just need to talk to people and know people. And so, yeah, at first what I did was I attended all these different programs. Specifically, I went into the, the Board of Trades um, Leaders of Tomorrow's program. And my intention was I want to get a job, right? I treat it as a transaction. The idea of, hey, okay, this is going to get my foot in the door. I'm going to have access to so many different people. I'm going to talk to them and then I'm going to impress the crap out of them to the point where they're going to offer me an interview, right? And when I gone through the process, when I gone to the program and um, I remember they had like this grand opening of all the students that got into the program and I started noticing where you really feel that it's not genuine, right? Like you come, people come up to you and they'll just hand you business cards without even asking what your name is. Or there are other people who are looking at you and you can tell that they're already thinking about the next thing to say rather than just really absorbing what I have to say and trying to reflect upon that, right? Having a genuine conversation. And when I thought about that, it was like, I don't think that's how you're supposed to be communicating or networking or what have you, if you, even if you want to get into a job. And I was not feeling that. And so I told myself, okay, if I'm going to these opportunities or if I'm going to put my foot, foot in the door and I want to talk to people to hopefully give me a job or whatever, I don't want to come into the angle of saying, hey, I want you to offer me something. I'm coming in thinking, hey, I actually want to meet some people. I actually want to learn what they're doing because my experiences, their experiences are completely different. And I just want to hear stories because that's, again, going back to as being an extrovert, that's what I feed my energy off of. So for me, the point that Forrest previously mentioned was really insightful because it just shows that you could come into networking feeling quite anxious and maybe worried about how you're going to connect with people at first. But there's always opportunities and steps to maybe pivot how you're approaching networking events and the people that you're meeting. And it's really comforting for me to know that no one has it right or perfect the first time, but it's always a learning experience, even for the most experienced or network professional. So the reason that we got Forrest on this episode of our podcast is because we think that he is a very well-networked person. So when we told him of this fact, we asked him, what did he think of it? Mm, I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked, yeah. I remember I remember you messaged me like the night and you're saying, hey, we're doing an episode on networking. And the first person I thought about was you. And I remember sitting back at my desk and I was like, wait, what are, you, what are you talking about, man? I don't do that kind of stuff, right? And so I remember sitting in my bed and I was thinking to myself, like, what, what are the things that I've done to the point where you think that I'm really good at networking, right? And so I'm still thinking to this day. So I clarified by discussing with him how he has so many of the stereotypical attributes of a well-networked person, namely... He seems to know almost anyone when you go walking around with him. He's got 600 likes per every single thing he puts on Facebook and Instagram. He just exudes the confidence and this aroma of someone who is just knows everyone is just so well networked. For me, I feed off of validation, right? And so back then when I get all these likes on Instagram or whatever, people are saying, wow, Force, you look so good. (laughs) Obviously, like that makes me feel great, right? You know, and so, but yeah, no, I remember there was this point I'm probably not answering the question, but I remember this, there's this point in like second or third year. I remembered um, getting involved in campus and I remembered um, just because I, my education, I was, I was schooled in Richmond, right? So 
a lot of my classmates came to UBC, so it was really easy to kind of bump into each other and, you know, know people on the campus already, right? And so to have that feeling of, like, people knowing you or whatever, or they're coming up to say, hey, Force, how are you doing? And again, going to the social media thing. I remember going to third year and fourth year when it started getting a little more hectic, I guess, just because of my roles or whatever. It was like, I didn't feel great at all, you know? Like, I kind of felt... Like, we're going to, like, this artificial talk about networking, and that's how I kind of felt, you know? It was like, do you guys really, are you guys really genuinely interested in what I'm doing, or are you guys just doing it because, hey, it was up on Instagram, and it's uh, it's a big event, or you're a valedictorian, or I'm going to like this. Like, do you genuinely care Mm -hmm. it's because of me or because of the actual achievement itself? And uh, I don't know. That's the thing, though, right? It's like, I remember that euphoria where it was, I didn't want to be that kind of person where I'm hunting for validation or I'm hunting for likes, where I want to uh, describe myself based on how many people I know. If people think that I know a lot of people or if apparently people think I have a lot of friends <laughs> on Facebook or whatever it is, is like I'm not, like nowadays I don't, I don't value that as much. So what I gathered from Forrest's remark just now is that when people think of being highly networked, they have this image of a person walking down the street and having like 500 people chasing them. And while that may make you feel like a highly valued person, the downside of it is that many of those relationships can seem really superficial and it can be really hard to distinguish the relationships that are highly genuine and the ones that are not. So one of the things that I think we've gathered so far is that Forrest is primarily a well-networked person because he's something of an extrovert. And it seems to be the case that most of the people that are very well networked are extroverted. And so we asked Forrest if he thought that you needed to be an extrovert to be well networked or if there were certain personality types up to and including extroversion, which are more amenable to networking than others. The one thing I'm hearing every single time about this idea where it's like you're not feeling comfortable, you're not feeling you're ready, you're not, you're not feeling like you have this personality or this X, Y, Z. Again, it's going back to the idea of why network, why I don't like networking is because it's A to Z, right? It's the idea that you have to fit these requirements in order for that to happen. Well, I'll give you one requirement. The requirement is don't worry about it too much, right? Like, and that's what I mean, though, right? It's like I felt the same way as well. Like in my best thing anyone's ever said. Yeah, no, it's like <laughs> it, it applies to everything. It applies to networking. It applies to relationships, right? Like everything. Like just don't worry about it too much, and then you'll feel a lot more better about yourself. It's like I like I'll give you I'll give you the story. I remember like um, getting to the co-op program for the arts program. I remember it was a Saturday. I think it was January something on a Saturday, and I remember going in, and they said, hey. During lunchtime, we're going to have a networking event. And I'm like, oh, crap, come on. I, I didn't want to go into business because of this. Now I have to do, do this networking thing? Like, what's going on? And I remember feeling super uncomfortable, man. Like, people were coming in. And as you mentioned, they came up to these, these industry leaders saying, hey, what's up? My name is XYZ. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I'm not doing that crap. you got to be kidding me, right? And I felt nervous. Like, I remember I didn't lift up my arms because I was sweating, man. <laughs> like, I didn't want anyone to see that, right? And that was, that was the moment, like, again, two years, three years afterwards when I got into the, pro, the Board of Trade program or also when I got involved on campus with, with the Econ or Guys Society, it was the idea that, you know what, I, I could care less about how people view me, right? And that's why you see me as the person who would do some really random stuff that's pretty embarrassing, and yet I won't feel embarrassed about it at all. You see me go up to a person and I'll say something really stupid, and at the same time, again, I won't feel bad about that at all is because, again, I'm able to let go of what other people perceive of me, right? And so I think that's the biggest thing though, right? It's because with education or the way we're being raised so far is that we've been feeded off of achievements, we've been feeded off of success or the idea of if you check this off, you're considered good and if not, you're bad, right? And so you're always used to having that success. And so when you start looking at networking as one of those things that you haven't succeeded in, that's where you start feeling that pressure and that's when you start thinking, oh crap, I'm, I'm not ready for that, right? And so it's like, again, it's like anything else, right? If you start, if you forget the fact that, hey, maybe that networking thing is not my thing and just coming into it is like, hey, you know what? I just want to, I just want to talk to someone, right? Mm-hmm. And whatever the result is, what is whatever the result is, right? That's the mindset you have to kind of go into though, right? And again, you feel so much better about it as well, right? And so, yeah, I, I guess, I guess that's why you may have perceived me as a networking kind of person is because again, it was the idea where I'm not too, well, now I'm not as affected by what other people perceive of me, right? And going in with this mindset of like, again, I just want to meet people. And I think to answer your question about like, do you have certain personalities? I'll say this, it's easier for people who are extroverted. Like 
no joke, right? Because I know friends who are introverted and they're scared shitless when it comes to these kind of things, right? Like they they fear, like they have a phobia of talking to people, right? And like, yeah, I would agree. It will be really difficult for someone who doesn't like to talk to people and that's fair, right? But again, it's because of that phobia or you're acknowledging the fact that you have this fear, that's what's holding you back from being able to quote unquote network successfully, right? So again, I, th I think I think people just need to come, kind of come off with like a clean slate and not having to worry about these expectations or what their current personalities are and just live in the live in the present. Don't even worry about like who you are as a person. Just go in. So while it may seem true that people who lean to extroversion are able to participate and engage in networking events easily, it does not mean that people who may not have that sort of personality won't be able to excel um, in networking. I think Forrest really raised a good point about approaching networking as maybe less of a stressful event whereby you have to come in and know what you want and know who to talk to, but also coming in with like a more casual mindset of just maybe wanting to talk to people and meet people who may sort of like share the same ideas and interests as you do. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the ideas that's come up quite a bit in this episode is this idea of the authentic self. And Forrest appears to have a very benign view of social interactions, wherein if you approach social situations with a certain degree of self-authenticity and genuine interest, you will be rewarded with a strong, happy, and connected social network. And one of the things that we wanted to point out was that Maybe that's a bit of a luxury for people who can afford to be their authentic self. And so what we meant by that was that let's say you're someone who needs to make the rent next month and you desperately need a job opportunity. There's a certain pressure there which forces you to possibly be inauthentic when approaching people who could potentially be your employer. So because there's this pressure to sort of conform to the values of who may or may not be your employer... People in a position of, let's say, poverty or a position of destitution may not be so inclined to be authentic or may not be able to be authentic. And so we asked him what he thought about that situation, and he became very introspective. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to reflect that because I, I guess I've been really fortunate where I haven't been in that position, right? Just because I guess in my perspective, I guess you and I are very similar in the sense that we want to feel comfortable, right? And so for us to feel comfortable, we want to be able to speak the truth. And we like to be in an environment where people are truthful, right? So if they don't like the things that we say, they say it to us and we actually take that as great advice, right? And I, yeah, no, that's, that's the unfortunate part with this kind of society where there's different expectations. Unfortunately, the way things are laid out is that there's still a structure, right? And unless you're, unless you're some sort of Buddha or God or yeah. whatever, and you converted everybody to think that way, yeah. that's not going to happen, right? And that, that's unfortunate, right? Especially nowadays with social media going crazy with the internet. And again, just how quickly information can travel nowadays yeah you do have to be a little extra careful and unfortunately people perceive that as oh i have to put on my best fit or whatever it is and that could lead to this idea of that unauthenticity right and so i would answer that going back to what we mentioned before that we've been talking about was again going back to the idea of interest right going back to your incentives and so if i was that person where i I was going to be homeless if I don't get the rent in on time for the next week. Then in this case, my interest, my incentives is that I want to get a job. And in that case, that's that's maybe how you're going to have to go forward with that, right? Or if it's the idea where you're trying to switch into another occupation and you want to build your brand, then unfortunately that in that avenue, you're going to be in this position where it's you're coming in looking for that, right? And so... I guess now you're now reflecting back. It does make it no, no, no. It does make it sound like that I was very fortunate, right? Because yeah. I was, because the funny thing was like I remember going in my position. I felt like I was miserable. I felt like, hey, everyone's getting all these opportunities. I'm doing decent in school. I, I, I got involved. I, I, I hope, hopefully, I should be able to find something when I graduate, and I'm not. And I, I thought I was miserable, but I'm, I'm doing fine. I'm still, I'm still, I still have a place. Now, what Forrest had to say didn't necessarily answer the question that we put forth to him. However, I do have to say that I was rather humbled by his degree of self-awareness and humility because what Forrest said was a level of appreciation for what he had that, you know, is not always easy to just know on the spot, as particular during an interview. And unfortunately, both Lyle and I do not feel as though we have a solution to this problem where people may not be able to be their authentic selves either. And... I think what that really indicates is that we as a community really need to address this moving forward. And I think that's something that we can do.
So after that, we turned the tables a little bit, and we turned back to one of our previous podcast episodes on elitism, and we talked to Forrest about this issue wherein some people are just simply born into better networks than others, or they just come into them by way of chance, and how that can be kind of frustrating for people who may not have the best network around them now, or may never have had that opportunity to begin with. And so we asked Forrest what he felt about that instead. Yeah, yeah. And I'll be very genuine too. Like I I would feel pretty upset about that as well, right? Like when when you start comparing others or you start to uh put your su- definition of success on a metric by looking at what's around <clears throat> surrounding you, then yeah, in this case it's natural to feel really pissed off or start questioning yourself, how come this person gets these opportunities and I don't, right? And you know, the one thing, when, when, you, when you start talking about that, the first thing that came to mind was there's this um, video that I saw that mom, my mom was showing me just to, like trying to get me to study for my finals, trying to inspire me or whatever. Um, and I remember the video where uh, there were a bunch of teenage, old teenagers, young adults lining up in a field. And there was a dude at the back corner and he held a wad of cash and he said, okay, we're going to have a little race. Whoever comes here first gets, I think it was like a thousand dollars USD, right? Not Canadian dollars. So you know the rates are pretty decent, right? But anyway, so he holds up the the money and he says, "But before we start the race, I want you guys to take a step forward for each statement that matches you." And he brought up every single statement that he brought up was had something to do with this quote unquote elitist or this idea that people had privilege, right? So the idea of like, okay, take one step forward if you have two parents. Take one step forward if you if your parents have a job. Take one step forward if you live in the house. And you start to see all these different people scatter around and there's these people in the back who are homeless, who have single parents, uneducated. And you can see that, right? You can see this idea where people are starting to compare each other and they're feeling really crappy about themselves. But the best, the beauty of the message that the guy said at the end of the video was two things, right? Like the first thing was for the people who are up in the front, you have an opportunity you, and you have this quote unquote head start. You should take advantage of it, right? Right? Don't, don't again, the, the notion of like comparing yourself to others or whatever with what's in front of you, thinking about what's best for you, you want to t- take the best opportunity out of, out of what is available. Mm-hmm. At the same time, if you're in the back, you're gonna do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Best of what's available. Sure, if you put in a comparison and you compare it to the people in front of you, yeah, they have an advantage. But what the people in the back also have that these guys also have is the idea of your values and the idea of hard work and the ideas of motivation and inspiration. You just gotta have to dig into that, right? And so, Again, with this, this, going back to the concept of networking, when you start to compare that with others and you start to look into this idea of like different divisions of networking, like whether you're networking with like your friends or networking with like your teachers or networking with these people that you never have met of in this case, and you start comparing that, it gets really dangerous, right? But at the end of the day, if you start viewing in this perspective where it's whatever opportunity is available, you're going to make use out of that, then... I feel like everyone is equal in that sense if you're looking at it just purely based on that hard work. My parents never had a university education. My mom dropped out in grade six, right? And yeah, I was. you can say that in terms of the race, both of us, we were at a disadvantage in this case. But what got us going was that regardless of what's happening outside, we have what's available with us and we're going to make the best out of it, whether our back is against the wall or whether someone decides to give us a basket full of goodies or whatever. And and I'm going to geek out a little bit. Like if you, if you guys remember like Econ 101 where you talked about like happiness utility right and they always say that when you start from the bottom and you move if you incrementally move up that level of happiness the amount is significant compared to the next one the next one and then it, all of a sudden it plateaus right like i feel that, that's what we're describing right now is the fact that for us when we don't have anything or we're starting from the bottom or we don't have that connection when we do make those connections or we put ourselves out there it's like that feeling of success or that feeling of like that hard work being paid off it feels so much greater than let's say in this case those who are already have that that next step is going to be as you mentioned that person will feel like oh whatever it's another friday right and you don't get that same satisfaction at all right yeah, so I, you know, I lost my train of thought about that. But yeah, I, 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 I would say I'm actually kind of happy that things weren't, weren't going so well at first, right? Because yeah. I really do see the beauty in like that hard work and that grind and where you have to kind of start from the bottom. You have to really test yourself, right? <clears throat> yeah, so I don't know. 
So I couldn't help but feel inspired throughout the course of this conversation with Forrest because every time we brought up something that might be controversial or a big issue, he has this way of turning it into something positive. As someone myself who wasn't born into a particularly big or well-connected network, I have to say that there has been a beauty in struggling to craft my own situation and in making my own connections. But that set us off on a bit of a tangent wherein I started to discuss some of the literature on network science that I came across in my preparation for this episode. And one of the most prominent ideas that has come out of that body of work is that more weak connections tends to equate to better life opportunities than less strong connections. So for example, if I have a thousand acquaintances, I am more likely to have more opportunities to advance my position in life than if I have only five very close best friends and only a few acquaintances. And that kind of goes against the emotional side of our brain, which wants to think that strong connections always equate to better opportunities in life or more happiness. And so we grappled with Forrest about this a little bit, and we wanted to sort of reframe the terms of debate. And what we started talking about was how even though some connections start out as, let's call them, weak, that doesn't mean that they have to stay weak. And as an example, I told Forrest a story about how at my previous job, I had a group of colleagues who at the very beginning I thought of more as acquaintances than I did as friends. But after losing my laptop at work, this team of acquaintances bandied together to save enough money to buy me a new laptop. And that was really deep and touching. And I came to realize that some connections that seem shallow are stronger than they were to begin with, and they can become stronger as time passes. And so we had a discussion about that. I don't. I don't think it's again with the label of networking, or whatever. I, I don't like the label at all. Yeah. Um, but that that perspective of how these different levels or whatever, and again, it's dynamic, right? Like things can change. There could be a case where you have like this really great friend of yours back in like elementary school, and all of a sudden they become like your acquaintance, or they could become your coworker, and you guys don't have that connection anymore, right? Because like people's values change all the time, right? Yeah. And so. I, again, when you're thinking about networking, you think about meeting people or whatever whatever it's supposed to be, don't expect it to stay that way in terms of like what what you value that person of, right? So going back to your, the, that notion where with your old bosses in this case, I'm not sure how you felt, but maybe it may have been transactional at first when you wanted that job Seriously. to an extent, right? And then as you start to talk to them more, right, with time start, with time going, going by, you start to develop these values and you start to understand each other a lot more better. And that leads into this other aspect, yeah. right? And so I think the really key, the other key aspect that we need to talk about is the idea of the, t- the time, right? right? And that's why that's why I'm not really a fan of networking is because they don't give you that luxury anymore. It's compressed like crazy. Mm-hmm. You have to somehow be able to find someone and then turn that into this really deep connection in 30 minutes who does that right <laughs> like you can't even do that on on tinder it doesn't work that way you need a couple days for that right and so yeah and I, I do I do like that notion where it's like yeah you there's cases where you have these different kinds of connections here and there but again it's I wouldn't think of it as like level one level two level three you think about it as like a continuum on the line that's constantly changing all the time I feel like we're going back to what we talked about before was the idea of authenticity or genuinity, right? And just from hearing that story, the stories that you two have told, it was really the one key thing was because you two were very genuine in terms of what you guys were doing, right? Like you guys were coming in, yeah, sure, you guys were doing your work or you were studying or whatever, and yeah, you're doing that trans, quote unquote transactional piece, but the personality shows where you're really being genuine in this case and you're not really looking for any kind of specific outcome. And people see that, right? Like when you start viewing other people and you're not looking at them in a shallow perspective in this case, right? And instead of like, labeling them as shallow or deep in this case, and you just treat them as regular human beings or you show that you're very genuine, people see that. So I guess that brings us back to our original question where we asked, what is networking? And a lot of people approach that question rather cynically and think that networking is sort of a business transactional environment wherein you aggregate people who could be of use to you down the road. But one of the things that Forrest has emphasized is that that's not necessarily the way that we need to treat it. And I think that's my big takeaway from this episode. Networking is not something that you have to do actively. It's something that you can do simply by forming deep ties and connections with people and genuinely caring about what they have to say. Admittedly, sometimes your ability to do this is constrained by your interests. However, as long as you approach those situations which aren't constrained with a certain degree of authenticity, you can build deep and strong networks with the people who genuinely matter to you. 
Yeah, for me, I agree with your assessment about forming deep and authentic connections with the people that you are surrounded with. And so my biggest takeaway from our conversation with Forrest is about opportunities. And what I mean by that is Forrest raised a really good point that it might be easy to fall into the trap of comparing yourself to other people and maybe thinking that, you know, other people have better opportunities for you when it comes to networking or that certain people have a personality that gives them an advantage when it comes to, you know, gaming the networking system if you want to think about it. But I really appreciate the idea of Forrest mentioning that it's always important to work with what you have and to sort of like celebrate authenticity when it comes to, you know, your, your personal being and your personality. And with that, we'd like to thank you for tuning into this week's episode of Intuition, and we'd like to encourage you to keep the conversation going by commenting on our upcoming blog linked in the description. Also, if you'd like to keep up with us on Instagram and Twitter, you can find us at UBC Learn. If you'd like to keep up with Forrest, you can find him on his Instagram handle at TreeBoy. That's T-R-E-E-B-O-I. Thanks again for tuning in, and I hope you have a wonderful week. Not there for here?